everyone knows what this instrument is. Perhaps it's one of the most known instruments in the entire world. I've played the violin for eight years, until 2006, when I moved to China. China overwhelmed me. I was amazed by the amount of activities on the street. People everywhere, traveling, doing business, selling stuff, even singing and dancing on the streets. I was amazed. And so one day, my family and I walked through the streets of China when we heard a beggar playing a wonderful, passionate Chinese piece of music on something that looked extremely weird, to say the least. It looked fragile, thin, old, ancient, very small, and was just simply, by far, the strangest instrument I have ever seen. But the sound that came out of that fragile little instrument was extraordinarily beautiful. At least to me it was. And it was at that moment that I was hooked. This was the instrument I wanted to learn to play. It was the arhu. Now there are interesting differences and similarities between the two instruments. But clearly, at a glance, it seems like the violin is the more sophisticated of them both. I mean, let's face it. The violin's body is gorgeously made, and trust me, it's extremely difficult to make. However, the Arhu's body, on the other hand, is just a simple wooden hollow hexagon covered with python skin. Very primitive, if you ask me. I've got four strings on the violin and just two on the Arhu. The bow of the violin, or at least the hairs of, on the bow of the violin, they're perfectly lined and it's just perfectly straight. However, the bow of the arhu is just this very flexible bamboo stick with hairs just hanging loosely in between the two strings. Not very practical. By the way, arhu is an abbreviation of arxian hu qing, which literally means two-stringed barbarian instrument. <laughs> that basically says it all. Nothing special. However, the history of the Arhu dates back a thousand, uh, 2,000 years beyond that of the violin. The Arhu was brought into China by the so-called barbarians of the north, now modern-day Mongolia, nearly 2,000 years ago. Somehow, it never made it into the west while the violin conquered the world. And in my view, the Arhu deserves a much broader audience than just China. Now, for me, this ugly, fragile, and forgotten instrument has truly captured my passion. Actually, I think it's a beauty. Kind of cool to have an instrument with Python skin, don't you think? When I first had this instrument in my hand, I wondered, how will I ever get any decent sound out of this thing? Well, it's not easy, since this extremely flexible bamboo bow is hanging in between the two strings. That means that if you push the bow outwards to engage the outer string and push the bow inwards to engage the inner string. Not very practical, once again. What I find most interesting, however, is that the Chinese did not use any form of music notation until the mid-20th century. Now, that means that for thousands of years, the Chinese have played the repertoire from memory, passed down from person to person to person, meaning that anyone and everyone can put their own emotion and passion into each piece. Plus, the notation looks like this, numbers. I know it looks very confusing, but it's extremely simple. It's just numbers, one to seven, each number being a note. A dot above or below the note indicates what octave it is in. A zero is simply a rest. One line under a note indicates a quaver. Two line under notes indicates a semi-quaver, and so on and so forth, along with many other different symbols and characters. In one of the pieces that I learned, there were no music bars, just notes, no rhythm, no tempo, no nothing. My instructor told me that I could do anything I wanted with the no these notes and put my own emotion and passion into this piece. Now, that means that one single piece can be interpreted in millions of ways. Now, if I were to play it as it says on the score, it would sound like this. Very boring. However, I interpreted it like this.
What I love most about this instrument, other than its sound and its beauty, is the wide range of playing techniques that come along with this instrument. And in my view, there are far more than one can explore on the violin. Chinese, China is obviously a very large country, it's very big, and therefore there are many different styles. But overall, Chinese music is often very programmatic. It's always a highly emotional view on nature. And for that, sounds of nature are often copied within the music, and the Arhu is a perfect instrument for this. For example, listen if you can hear the birds. What about the horse neighing? Uh, in both Western and Chinese music, vibrato is used for expressive purposes. But with the arhu, you can, apply, you can apply as much pressure as you want, so you can be even more dramatic. Chinese music is very legato, and that's why portamentos, or just simply slides, are extremely crucial. Now, there are many different slides, and you will encounter them all the time in Chinese music. You've got the casual slide in between notes, which you basically encounter every three seconds. But you've also got very special slides. For example, you've got the up and down slide, which literally goes up and down. You've got the dramatic attack and slide. And my personal favorite, the Mongolian slide. Very difficult. Um, and there's also many more different techniques, like the Chinese pizzicato, which is basically when you pluck both strings and play at the same time, like so. Now, when I moved to China, I found that it was my purpose to learn to play a traditional instrument. And the arhu fit the bill. And by doing so, I not only learned new musical techniques, but I also got the chance to understand a different culture. Now, I believe that if you truly want to understand a different culture and its people, you have to connect to the heart of the people. And this is exactly what music does. And through the Arhu, I feel I was able to better connect to the rich Chinese culture. Having grown up in a Western society, I had the misconception that, China, that Western music was superior to all. I mean, let's face it, our Western society has dominated the world for the last few centuries because we had superior technologies. And as a result, many ethnic cultures, like Chinese music, has ta have taken an unjustified, inferior position. But the truth is, passion does not depend on perfection or superior technologies. And the Arhu is evidence of that. I mean, just look at it and just listen to it. In China, some people say it sounds like a dying cat. And maybe it does. The violin sounds beautiful, but the arhu has the ability to sound painful, playful, sad, and peaceful. Because of our dominating culture, I believe that Chinese music has taken an unjustified, inferior position compared to Western music. And when I learned the arhu, it changed my perspective. And that is that Chinese music can easily compete with any Western classical piece of music. Now, I feel that it has become my purpose first of all, to master this instrument as best as I can while I'm still in China, and to keep this music alive, if not only just for myself, but preferably to get it known to a much larger audience. Now, being only 17 and not a professional musician, I still believe that I can make my contribution and hope that with this speech, I'll at least have touched you. Now, I would like to close off with a piece entitled Xiao Hua Du, literally meaning little flower drum. I don't know. <laughs>